Mr. Toastmaster, fellow life travelers, thanks for showing up. <laughs> 30 years in law enforcement has given me a front row seat to enough human drama to last me the rest of my life. Some of it mildly amusing, like the frantic 911 call from a person reporting their car stolen, only to embarrassingly discover after we get there that they came out a different door to the mall than they went in. <laughs> and their car is just around the corner from where they swear they left it. Some of it tragically amusing. I saw a man who committed suicide by cutting his own throat with a chainsaw. Chainsaw was still running when we got there. Sweet aroma of two-stroke oil and gasoline smoke still hovering softly in the air. Mercifully masked the ominous odor of human blood that had splattered on the wall and pooled on the floor. A quick survey of the scene. The first question I had was, what brand of chainsaw is that? Because I can never get mine to start. <laughs> Turns out it was a still. S-T-I-H-L. Which was astonishingly appropriate because it was still running and the dead dude was definitely still. <laughs> yes, these tired eyes have seen death a thousand times. I've seen people shot, stabbed, robbed, raped, beaten and left for dead in the desert. You watch the news, you've seen the stories, but unless violence has touched your life in a personal way, those stories can stay someone else's story, and you can stay insulated from the pain. Veronique Posner knows the pain of violence that's personal. She knows the kind of pain that no parent should know. Her six-year-old little boy, Noah, was the youngest of the 20 children murdered in the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School. She says that some days, the pain makes it hard to get out of bed. As a firearms trainer and use of force trainer, it's my job to prepare police officers as well as interested civilians on how to deal effectively with the violent predators of our society. And I do that by making violence personal, by bringing it out of the shadows where it tries to hide, out of the shadows of apathy, denial, and ignorance. The Japanese swordsman Miyamoto Musashi said, the path which leads to truth is littered with the bodies of the ignorant. I help people on their path to truth. And I start by asking this question. Whose responsibility is your life and safety? When violence becomes personal, whose job is it to deal with it? Many point to the police and say, that's your job. It says, serve and protect on the side of your police car. But I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is that when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. <laughs> How many minutes away do you live from the closest donut shop? <laughs> now that's kind of funny. But when the reality of that truth is staring you in the face, it's not funny at all. A woman recently learned that when thieves broke into her house when she was home alone. She quickly ran upstairs and hid in the master bedroom closet. Thieves looking for loot soon made their way there and found her hiding, cowering, crouched behind the clothes. She begged, please, please take whatever you want. Just don't hurt me. Where's your money? Give me your money. Can you imagine any more helpless a feeling than knowing that your life and its potential early and violent end is out of your control and that all you can do is beg and pray for the mercy and compassion of a criminal? What would you do in that situation? More importantly, what could you do? At the hospital, I told that lady her story 
could have been different if she had a gun in that closet. She could have gone from begging for her life to having the power to protect it. And this is what I want to emphasize, that the right to defend your life and family is fundamental to life, liberty, and our pursuit of happiness. It's not just your right. Ultimately, it's your responsibility. But it's your choice. It's your choice. Ronnie Posner. What do you think she would give to have been able to be in Noah's classroom, armed with a gun and the confidence to use it when that killer came through the door? And if she could not have been there, how thankful would she have been or anyone else who, would, who was there. I think her tears of joy and thankfulness would have wet their cheek. But sadly, all she has are memories. One of the memories that she shares of a few days before the shooting. Little Noah runs downstairs and she said, what are you doing out of bed? A little annoyed. Noah cheerfully responded, I just want to give you another hug. Well, why is your pajama top off? With Noah's arms wrapped around his mother, he looked up at her with those brown, big brown, innocent, smiling eyes and said, so that I can feel your heartbeat better, mommy. It's your choice, friends. It's your choice. It may be the most important one you make. Make it count.